Krishna, 
हरे कृष्ण यो हम कपांगान में हो आज नरसिंह महाराज को साथ में हम आज कपांगान आइए कपांगान में हम यहाँ सानो सेंटर रहे हमारा अलेक्स प्रभुजी को टीम यहाँ जर्मनी रशियन अल डिबोटिज They are all have this Sunday program have, so we are also come here and join Kirtan and Katha. This is in Kapangan. So I am here to tell you that for the next one, Kasamoy, Kasamoy go plan the program. We are at that account. This is Kapangan, Kapangan. Yes, yeah, sir. Name ke le ra na. नारे आरे हरे राम हरे राम राम हरे आरे हरे इतना रे इतना इतना रे आरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे आरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hello. Hare Krishna.
the, there were devotees over here on this island. I didn't know that there was gatherings here to speak on the full moon. I thought that it was only like once in the month that people gathered, but I can see many people are living here. And when we came on the boat, it was a shock to see so many people coming on the boat. So I, I can understand this is really a very popular place. And we like to go where the people are, right? Krishna consciousness. We don't go to the mountains, we, could, we don't go like the Buddha, sit on the mountain away from everyone. We don't go to the forest, we like to be in the cities, we like to be where the people are. Because as devotees, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted that the holy name should be chanted everywhere. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predicted that the chanting of the holy name would be heard in every town and every village. When I go to Russia, I go to Russia because from China, uh, Habarsk and uh, Kamchatka. Kamchatka, have you been to Kamchatka? No? We have a temple now in Kamchatka and a restaurant. So that's something I helped a bit to develop, the temple in Kamchatka. And I go Blogovations, I go Sakhalinsk, these places. Very far, right? From Moscow. Very far away. Most Russians they never go there. <laughs> very far. But, uh, we go. Krishna's devotees are there. We have activities, we have preaching there. So wherever the devotees are, we like to uh, go and encourage the devotees. Before the temple comes, first the devotees come. So here also, in this island, we hope in the, in the future also one day we'll have the temple here. Rivo. We just need the devotees to stay here, right? And come and here, come here and stay here and help make a nice temple for Krishna. Chanakya Pandit, Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada would often quote an Indian moralist named Chanakya and he said, don't go to that place where there's no river. Because if there's no river, then there's no water to bathe in and there's nothing to drink. So a river is very important. And he said, don't go to that place where you have no friend. You don't have any friend. <laughs> and, also. And, if, and don't go to that place where there is no temple. <laughs> so there should be a temple, right? We have to make a temple here so that people will feel more comfortable here. So, to the beginning of the temple is to get devotees, find out devotees, and we find out the devotees by Sankirtan. There is Kirtan and Sankirtan. Sankirtan means coming together, not just only one, two people, but more people getting the groups of people, the mass of people together, giving them the holy name. So that's very important to have Sankirtan. And when people hear the holy name, they will be attracted. Just like I was born in the UK, I was born, brought up in a Christian family, not very religious, and not very pious, but I heard the holy name. I heard the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. The devotees had come to England and they had met George Harrison and they made the record of Hare Krishna mantra. And when I heard the mantra, I was immediately attracted to the chanting of the holy name. 
and I liked to, I used to chant a lot, but I didn't know who is Krishna, I didn't know anything, but I just liked to chant. So devotees, uh, they had come. At that time I was studying, I was a student, I was a young man, and uh, they'd come to England, and they came to England, and they were able to make that record, and they were give, able to give the holy name to so many people. So through, through the chanting of the holy name, Krishna consciousness is awakened. Consciousness of Krishna is in everyone, but they need to hear about Krishna. Hearing is the first step in bhakti yoga. We have to hear. Hearing in Sanskrit is called shravana. We hear, and then when we hear nicely, then we chant. And chanting is called kirtana. So, Shravanam Kirtanam, Vishnu. Vishnu means also Krishna. So, we are teaching consciousness of Krishna, not just any Deva. I know in Russia I see a lot of Ganesh and Shiva and many different Devas that are all met there. In Russia, many Russian people know about many different gods. But we are mainly, we are Krishna Bhakta. Bhakti Yoga is meant for worship of Vishnu and Krishna, not other devas, not other uh, demigods we call them. So we promote the consciousness of Krishna through the chanting, of the Maha Mantra. Maha Mantra is especially recommended above all other mantras. There are many mantras to chant. You know things like Gayatri Mantra chanted. Gayatri Mantra is chanted silently. Gayatri Mantra you have to be in the mode of goodness. You have to be very pure. So, how many people here in this island could chant Gayatri Mantra? Not too many. But Hare Krishna Mantra, everyone can chant. Even the sinful people, they can chant Hare Krishna Mantra and they can be greatly benefited. That is the power of the Maha Mantra. The Krishna manifests in the form of His holy name. In the Kali Yuga, Kali, this age, this age is called Kali Yuga. Just like there are four seasons, there are four ages. Just like you have spring and summer and autumn and winter. So, we have four ages. There is the golden age. There is the silver age. There is a copper age. Now we are in the iron age. Or you could say plastic age. <laughs> Not even iron. So this is Kali Yuga. And in the Kali Yuga, the process, there's in each age there's a different process for becoming enlightened and to achieve self-realization. You could understand this island in the past, maybe it was an island of great yogis. They would come here and they would do their meditation. Just like Hawaii. Srila Prabhupada went to Hawaii and when he saw Hawaii with all the fruit trees, everywhere fruit, fruit growing and coconuts and you know waterfalls and he understood he said this is the land of yogis that in the past the yogis would be there and they would meditate so here also on this island this in the past people yogis would come here and they would do meditation 
But in this age, Kali Yuga, meditation, silent meditation is not possible. Very difficult in this age. Where will you get the peace? Where will you get away from everything? So what, what is recommended in this Kali Yuga is not the meditation. Meditation was in the golden age when people lived 100,000 years. They could live a long time and they would do meditation for many years. But Kali Yuga, we don't have a long life. We have a short life. And we are very lazy also. We are not very disciplined. It's difficult for us to practice meditation. But what we can do is chanting. And that is called mantra meditation. The meditation on the sound vibration of the mantra. So the Hare Krishna mantra, that is called the Maha mantra. The great chanting for deliverance. The Maha mantra can be chanted by anyone, anywhere, anytime, any place, purified or unpurified. Anyone can chant the holy name and be greatly benefited by contact with that mantra. As we said the mantra is Hare Krishna mantra. Krishna is in his name. The name of Krishna is not different from Krishna the person. So in the Kali Yuga it said the Kali Yuga Krishna comes Avatar, the word avatar means one who comes down. He comes down from the spiritual world and he comes in the form of his holy name. And he's so kind that when we chant, Krishna dances on our tongue. Did you feel Krishna dancing on your tongue when you were chanting? If you are chanting nicely, Krishna manifests on your tongue when, we ch when you chant. And it's very, very powerful. It destroys all our past karmas. It purifies us from all the things which we may have done in many lifetimes. This is the effect of the meditation. And that helps us to awaken our spiritual energy which is within us. We have a material body. We have the gross physical body. The one you can see in the mirror. But we have also a subtle body. Just like we have a mind and we have intelligence an ego, that is the subtle body. But we also have a spiritual body. And that spiritual body is covered by the material body. But when we chant the Maha Mantra, then it awakens the spiritual energy within us. And by chanting, we see how this whole place, this whole, uh, uh, this whole uh, building here becomes spiritualized. It becomes transcendental just by the chanting of the Holy Name. When we are chanting, we're no longer in Thailand. We're no longer in Koh Phan Am. When we are chanting, our consciousness is awakened to the spiritual platform and you can feel the spiritual energy awaken. This is the effect of the chanting of the holy names. 
So we are in, we are encouraged to do this chanting, to take this chanting on a regular basis, not just once a week, but you have to do it every day. We have to do it regularly, just like if you have a disease, if you have some sickness, the doctor will give you medicine and he'll tell you every day you take this medicine. So similarly, the spiritual teachers like Prabhupada, and you can see all the teachers on the bottom there, on the picture, you see those different pictures of people, man on the bottom, there's Prabhupada, and then Prabhupada's guru, and his guru, and guru's guru. So they are all the teachers, and they all say, you have to chant regularly. Every day we should do this chanting. And then it takes very part, it will take great effect, quickly it will take effect. You'll feel the difference. So this, this chanting, this is like the medicine to cure us from conditioned, conditioned life. There are two, there are two kinds of souls. One soul is liberated. They're free from the material energy. They're not subject to any of the evil forces of the world. They never get envious, they never get disturbed, they can tolerate all kinds of difficulties. They're liberated. Oh, but other souls are not liberated, they're called conditioned souls. Conditioned. We are conditioned, we are conditioned to think in terms of the body. We don't think, I am a soul, but we think, I am a body. We think, maybe we think, I'm a man, or I'm a woman, and somebody else thinks, I'm young, somebody else thinks, I'm old. We think in terms of the body. That is conditioned thinking. But by chanting the Maha Mantra, we can get rid of that conditioning and we can become liberated souls. We can become free. You get liberation. Liberation means freedom. Conditioned life means you're a slave. You're, you just do what other people do. Just like a lot of people eat meat and they think, you know, everybody eats meat, I should also eat meat. That is conditioning. We think, oh no, we have to eat meat. If I don't eat meat, I won't be healthy, I won't be strong. But we have many devotees all over the world who are big and strong and they're not meat eaters. They're all vegetarian. So vegetarian is also helpful in the practice of spiritual life. You want to develop your spiritual consciousness, the diet is important. There's a medicine and there's a diet. Just like if you are sick, the doctor may say, maybe you have diabetes. The doctor will say, don't eat sugar. Don't take too much sweet things because you have diabetes, right? So that's the thing. Or you have jaundice. The doctor will say, oh, don't take any fried food because you have jaundice. So according to the disease, there's a diet. So we have the disease, conditioned life. We are in the material consciousness. We want to come out of the material consciousness, to come to the spiritual consciousness. The diet is, we should not eat meat, fish and eggs, these things. What do you eat? Vegetarian. 
Actually, we are not just vegetarian. We practice in our yoga diet, we practice, we eat food which is spiritualized, spiritual food, a spiritual diet. Just to be vegetarian is not even fully enough because with the vegetarian diet there's still some karma. We're still getting. But when the food is purified by offering, just like when we eat food, we will offer the food to Krishna. And in this way all the karma is taken away. And we are able to take spiritual food. So this is, this is the diet, you see. In practicing yoga, you have to have the proper diet, right? In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, yogi does not eat too much, does not eat too little, right? You eat too much, you get sick. You know what to say, if you eat too much, you will get diabetes. It's a rich man's disease. You see in India especially, some people are very fat, you know. They eat a lot. They eat and that's why they have health diabetes problems. And some people don't eat enough. And if you don't eat enough, then you can get tuberculosis, TB. Because you didn't eat enough. So you have to be careful. You have to know what is the proper diet. Not too much, not too little. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also speaks about sleeping. He said, a yogi should not sleep too much, should not sleep too little. You have to sleep. Don't sleep too much. Don't sleep. But Everything has to be regulated. So, Krishna is describing the yoga process. Just like here in Kopana, there's a lot of yogis, a lot of people doing yoga, yoga studios. So, the yoga requires controlling the senses. We have to control the senses. And the mind also, of course. So there are five senses. Which one is the most difficult to control? Five senses. We have the nose, we have the eyes, we have the ears, we have the skin, and we have the tongue. So which one is the most difficult to control? Yes, right, the tongue. Very difficult to control the tongue. We like to eat, we will eat all rubbish food. You go to 7-Eleven and eat all kinds of garbage from there. And then we will also talk. The tongue is not only active in eating, but in talking. And we will talk also a lot of things which are not very good. So it's important to try to control the tongue by eating, first of all we say eat the spiritual food, what is called prasada, food offered to Krishna. Prasada means the mercy of Krishna. And then chant, the chanting of the holy names is also very important. You have to chant regularly, just like we have here, we have a bead bag and we keep our beads in the bag and we chant on the beads every day. You can chant anytime. Morning is good, but you can chant in the evening anytime. But chanting should be there. That's very important. It helps us. It helps to steady the mind. It helps to make us calm and peaceful. Maybe sometimes you get anxious, you get worked up, you get emotional, you get angry, you get disturbed. It's time to chant. It's time to chant the holy name. And in that way you can feel calm. 
you will feel relief. So you should, everyone, have, have you all got beats? Do you all have Japa beats to chant? How many of you have Japa beats? Raise your hand. So, if you don't have beef, we can get you some. Yeah, Prabhu, Chalakun Prabhu is coming from Kosamoy. He has a lot of beef there. So, you can get them. It's very good. You want to keep some beefs to chant. If you don't have beefs, you can chant on your fingers and you can count on your fingers. The fingers are made in such a way it makes it very easy to count. So, you, 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 you can, you know, you don't have beef, just chant. But chanting, why do we count? It's, we should know how much chanting you're doing. You may say, I'm chanting, but I don't know how much chanting I'm doing. Well, that's not very good because, just like if you take medicine, I took the medicine, how much did you, oh, I don't know, I just took the medicine. You, you, know, you have to know how much you're doing. There's a prescribed amount, you see, and you don't want to reduce. Once you start chanting, you want to keep doing it and keep doing it. And the more you do it, the more you'll feel the benefit, the more you will feel how this holy name, how that name of Krishna is helping us to overcome the material energy, to get rid of all the doubts and the problems, all the things which are disturbing us, they can all be removed just simply by taking shelter of the Holy Name, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. So we encourage all of you, you try to remember these things, try to be vegetarian, and if you are, how many of you are vegetarian? Quite a few, yeah, good. So, vegetarian is good. It's even better, krishna Krishnatarian. Right? krishna Krishnatarian. krishna Fruitarian. We just eat Fruitarian. Fruitarian. We still get karma. You're taking fruits. Those fruits belong to Krishna. You have to offer the fruit to Krishna. Yeah, just like I, I said, you may, if you don't offer to Krishna, then there's still karma there. Huh? You offer. They offer. Oh, okay, good, very good, yeah. Now Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, He said, you can offer a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, and He will accept. But it's not just a, it, He wants the devotion, it's important. He says, Patram Pushpam Palampa Toya Yome Bhaktya Prayachi. It's the Bhakti which Krishna wants. Krishna is not greedy to get our offerings. He has many goddesses of fortune serving him, offering him all kinds of fruits and stuff. So he's not greedy to get our fruits, but he does want to get our devotion. That's important. We want to direct our devotion towards Lord Krishna. And so, by eating Krishna Prasada, we purify our consciousness. We can help conditioning. So, eating is part of the yoga lifestyle, but more important is hearing. You have to hear regularly, and you have to have books like Bhagavad Gita. Who ha, who's not got a Bhagavad Gita? Do you have a Bhagavad Gita? Do you have Bhagavad Gita at home? Yes? Yes? Do you all have Bhagavad Gita? Yes? Anybody doesn't have a Bhagavad Gita? We can get you. We have, we have, we have some here for selling. Oh, good. Oh, you're selling here. Yeah. Russian. Yes? Okay, yes, very good, yes. 
We have in all the languages, you know, not only Russian, you know, the, the books are translated, the other languages are also there. Krishna consciousness is for everyone, not only for Russians. <laughs> of course, Russians are good devotees, but for everyone, we encourage everyone. The founder of Krishna Party. He went to Italy. In, yes, 1972 or 73. He went to Italy. And then the devotees, they made temples there. Hmm? Yeah. There are many temples in Italy. So we have the books there in Italy. Not a problem. Near Milan, there is a big temple in Valgemo. Yeah, in Valgemo, there is a big temple. Near. Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Anybody? So we have many centers in Thailand. Oh, I have a question. Is it okay if I ask it? Um, sometimes I think, do we have to have a physical temple? Because sometimes I feel like, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for welcoming me into this place. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your talk. And thank you that we can do some matters. Um, I have a question about uh, the temple. I think sometimes do we do we have to build? Uh, why is it important to build temples? Because I I sometimes feel like Mother Earth is the temple. Earth is the temple. Um, I heard a story a long time ago that changed my life. Uh, it was about a man who cut down the trees to build a church so he could pray to God. And then after he did that, he realised that God was in the trees. God was in the trees and he cut them down to build the church. So after I heard that, I, I started to realize that Mother Earth is the, is the temple. So I know that sometimes, you know, right now this, this is very useful space because it's, it's very hot outside and we cannot chant in the sun like this. Um, but I, I just, I still can't shake this feeling that Mother Earth is the real temple. Would you be able to comment on this? Yes. Well, it, the, the point is that not everybody is able to perceive the presence of God through Mother Earth, just by being on the Earth. But when you go to the temple, then, and who's in the temple? You see, you go to the temple because the Lord, the Supreme Lord is there in the temple. We go there to see Him. He, and the earth is actually his creation. So by going to the temple, then we're reminded of our relationship with him. And that's important for us. The going to the temple is, a, is also a, a convenient place to go and hear about God. We wouldn't know where to go. How to, I want, when I was searching, I was, you know, I had a lot of questions about life. I wanted to understand more about the purpose of the world, why I'm here, and what is this place for. Nobody could give me satisfactory answers. But when I went to the temple, then I got all the answers. So, you know, that was one example that, you know, I just walking on the earth, it didn't answer my questions. But going to the temple, I was able to meet 
people who practiced spiritual life and who studied scriptures and they could answer all my questions. So this is one good reason why we need temples. You see, temples are places for people to give that knowledge to others, you see. The idea, actually we want to make a temple in everyone's heart, yeah. Yeah. right? But sometimes, sometimes we have to have the temple, first of all, from the temple, the physical building, then you can put temples into other people's hearts. So it, this is the process, you know. The, so building temples, it, it helps to build temple in the hearts of people. When you have a temple, then people think, more, oh, I should go to temple, right? Oh, I should, I, oh, I have to go to temple. Oh, there's a festival. Oh, maybe Krishna's birthday, Janmashtami. Oh, we have to go to temple. Oh, it's Ikadisi. I should go to temple. Whenever there's a holy day, they're reminded to go to temple. And, and some people have the custom to go every day to temple. They make a habit that they'll go every day in the course to see. To see, not just to see, but to be seen. A, we have to understand, we don't just go to the temple to see God, but we go there that He will see us. The blind man wants to ask his friend, please take me to temple. His friend said, what, why do you want to go? You're blind, you cannot see anything. He said, I cannot see, I want God to see me. So, this is the idea. Thank you so much. Uh, is it okay if I just ask one, one more thing? And just Thank you for explaining that. It helps me to understand more why temples are created. Because I thought, I, I didn't know that everyone didn't feel like how I felt. Just, yeah, it's true, isn't it? Uh, it helps to build the temple in our hearts. Um, my parents are Hare Krishna devotees. And when I was little, I used to ask them, why don't we go to the temple? And they used to tell me the real temple was in here. But they didn't explain that not everyone felt that. Uh, so I, I really appreciate your explanation. Um, and until everyone can feel the temple in their heart that they don't need to go somewhere physical, can I understand what having a physical temple is a good idea? Thank you. Thank you for your question. everything in terms of the time and the place and the circumstances. Now, if you're not able to cook yourself, you don't have any facilities for cooking or anything, and so you may have to go to a restaurant and you may have to take food there. And of course you can you, you should offer it whatever uh, but as you say, it may be cooked by non-devotees. Well, what, what to do, you know? You have to eat. You have to take care of the body. If there is no other alternative, then you have to do that. Of course, it's not the best prasadam, 
But, but you're remembering Krishna, you're offering to Krishna. And how can we properly offer food from the restaurant? Well, you have to offer in your mind. And can you please explain how to do it, because many people don't know. Well, I, I don't want to encourage you to do this. I don't like that, that you make a habit to go to restaurants, you know? Actually, we should have a Govinda's restaurant here. We should have a Krishna conscious restaurant. We have uh, our devotee here, he's from Krabi, and he opened a big restaurant in Krabi. And they now they have two restaurants in Krabi. Three. They opened one Govinda's, then they opened another mini Govinda's. So two restaurants are there in Krabi. One in islands, so all together and three. another island, which is, and there's a, there's a um, Govinda's there also. And now he's also making a restaurant in Phuket. We're just beginning to have a place in Phuket. So, you know, you can find out from him, you know, why don't you do it? You know, make a nice restaurant and get some devotees to cook, you know. And it would be better than going to... I, I, I heard there's many vegan restaurants here. You know, 10, 10 or 20 vegan restaurants. But we're not vegans. We're not vegans, we, we're lacto-vegetarians. But we offer, we, must, we do offer everything to Krishna. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, like I say, time, the place, to, if, if you have no choice, then you have to do that. Just like Srila Prabhupada would be in India, and he would be traveling, and sometimes he's in the train, and you go past the station, he purchased some food from the man cooking on the, on the platform of the station. He would purchase some food there and, you know, take it and, and, and take it, offer it and eat it. And of course, you want to have that consciousness, you know, before you eat, at least within your mind, you offer it to Krishna and, ask, and tell Krishna, I'm so sorry that I should be offering proper prasadam to you. But this situation, at this time, I, I have no other choice, so please kindly accept this food. Like that, con consciousness of Krishna. You know, I, be, I preached for many years in China. I've been going to China for more than 30 years. So uh, I traveled a lot in China, and I, I never had out. You know, China is a place, you know, you're not going to get <laughs> vegetarian things in China. Practically nothing vegetarian there. And now, a little bit coming, but in the past, so always I would cook myself. I would go to, I would travel, I had a pot, one pot and one electric hot plate. And I would just cook something, some rice and, or some kitchari or something every day. And like that I could live very easily. You know, but you can get also fruit and dried fruits and nuts. These things are there. These girls are just eating fruits, you know. And so you, you don't need to eat food cooked by karmis. Food cooked by non-devotees is not very good because their karma goes into the food. And even they may be working in a vegetarian restaurant, the cook may not be vegetarian himself. <laughs> you know, he's, he's a cook in the vegetarian restaurant, but he's not a vegetarian. You get people like that. So it's not safe to eat in restaurants and to eat food cooked by non-devotees. It's certainly better just to eat fruits. Yeah. And you can make arrangements, you know, if you know, you, you can make arrangements. You, you don't need a lot. You can get a rice cooker, a simple rice cooker, and you can be cooking kitchari and rice and every day. Not, it's not difficult. And it protects you 
from the karma. So yeah, we encourage you. Uh, how to offer it? Well, we, when we offer food to Krishna, we chant the Maha Mantra. Chant the Maha Mantra three times. And if you know Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra, you can also chant Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. And then we say Panchataka Mantra and then Maha Mantra. So this spirit. And then Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's also given us, I saw you have on the wall up here, the Prasadam prayer, the, which we generally say in the temple. We say that Prasharya Ravija Jao. It's a Bengali song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The meaning is that of all the senses, the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. It is very difficult to conquer over the tongue in this world. But you, dear Lord Krishna, are so kind, you have given us this nice pusade. So now let Sri Sri Radha. And the females have the same fate as their mother. Um, and the mother only lives to a her natural lifespan is 22 years. I've met cows in England that are 22 years old in the sanctuary where they've been rescued. But those cows' fate was actually to live till five years old. Five years old, they're a baby when they're killed. I didn't know any of this. I was completely ignorant. And I just found it out um, because someone told me. And I did not believe it. I had to go on the internet and have a look. Because I thought, this can't be happening. Um, so I, I did some research and I also told my parents, they were also Hare Krishna de devotees and when they found out they were also horrified. So since 10 years we've all been vegan. Uh, I'm fruitarian as, as well, but uh, vegan first because I think it's huge disrespect to, uh, to the, the holy animal of a cow to, to be drinking their milk when I know that the pain they're going through. Um, so I, I know that many people are not aware, that's why I'm saying what I'm saying, it's the difference if someone is aware and if someone is not. Uh, and then if they do what they do, it's a choice. But there is no choice when people don't know. So I just wanted to raise awareness about this issue that has been highlighted for me. Um, and I I, um, I think that like, when I told my parents about it, they, they were saying that similar thing that, you know, in India so many years ago this didn't happen. But now India is the biggest uh, exporter of leather in the world. And to get the leather doesn't come from nowhere. The cows are killed to get it. So there's a lot of death going on there as well. But wherever there's dairy industry, the cows are, are, are having suffering. Um, and I, that's why I think that now the biggest respect for me to do for Krishna is to not harm his animals. Not harm his animals. So I, I ask you, what is the reason why you still consume milk? Because we get the milk from cows which we protect. We have our own cows. And if you go to the temple in London, the Bhaktivinanda Manor there, they have, a herd, they have a herd of cows. And those cows are all protected cows. So the milk is ahimsa milk. It's natural. Yes. Yes, in those places it's natural, but if someone goes in Kopanyan and buys some coffee with some milk in it, this is not coming from the cows which are protected, this is coming from the cows that are slaughtered at five years of age and that babies have been taken from them and killed also. So we train people not to do that. Yes. We, a devotee of Krishna is not going to go there and take coffee with that milk. So, so then would you say that anyone who is a devotee of Krishna should not drink the milk of cows that have been through so much suffering and only cows where they know. Yes, I would say. Okay, thank you. Because this is this is something that is not addressed so much. No, um, but we do address it. Oh, thank but, you. I appreciate it. We have to understand that it's not that we, we have to give up milk completely, but we have to protect the cows. Yes. The problem is the care of the cows. Yes. The, yes. the, the cow is just seen like some industrial animal. Yes, yes. And they don't, they're not given the care and yes. protection which they deserve. Exactly, they deserve protection and care and their babies deserve to drink before we do. Uh, and uh, they deserve to live a happy life. And, and I hope that one day, if, if there is milk in things, it will come from cows like this. But until then, 
I don't want to drink that stuff and I hope that other people can understand that the things in the supermarkets and the cafes is not a hymn for milk unless they really know where it's come from. Yeah, of course. We, we wouldn't encourage people to take the milk from a cafe. Thank you for addressing this. I appreciate it. Uh, but you should understand also that leather can also come from dead cows. Yeah, I don't, yeah, they don't Cows know also either. die, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, Srila Prabhupada said, people want to eat cow's meat, they can do it. When the cow's dead, let the cow die naturally. And then we'll give them the bodies and they can take the cow and eat the flesh. I completely understand and I agree with what you're saying, yeah. Why do people eat meat? They like blood. They like the taste of blood. So. The actual natural way to taste the blood is to drink milk. And the cow gives the milk. It gives more milk than, you know, there's a certain point once the calf grows where the calf should not drink the milk from the mother. But the cow is still giving milk. And that milk is meant for the brain of the human being. The human being, that if they don't get milk, then the brain will not develop properly. It's, milk is the most important food for human beings. Now all children, you know, if you have a baby, you're going to feed your milk to the baby. But after a certain point, you know, the child is still going to grow up. You want to give him the milk of the cow. Um, I would just feed them my milk until they don't want my milk anymore because I, I Hormonally, I think that many diseases come from drinking a species milk that is not designed for us. I understand why other people have difference, but as long as we're considering the ethics, what people want to do otherwise is their own choice. But I, I don't personally think that anyone needs to drink anyone else's milk because we've got our own milk to give. But I understand in a modern world, not that many women want to dedicate 10 years of their life to feeding their child their milk, so they have cow's milk instead. But I know many people, myself included, who got ill from drinking cow's milk. Um, also, it's because it's pasteurised as well, this is the problem. It's not straight from the cow most of the time, and it's come from suffering. So when we drink that milk, most of, you know, most of the milk produced, how did that, like you were saying, you know, in the meat, it's the suffering of the animal. It's the same with the milk in most cases, unless it's produced in a, in a better way. Um, but uh, that personal choice, I, I think... Um, so that there is... There is ahimsa milk. You can get the ahimsa milk. You know, we, we, it is available from the devotees. Somebody who has their own cow or that, where there's a herd of cows, and so they offer the milk. It's the milk. You get the milk, and then that is that is very very good food for offering to Krishna. And you can take the prasada. Is it better than human milk? Because I personally think woman, woman, a human woman's milk is better than a cow. It's more suited to us anyway. Um, well, human milk. You know, a woman, she may feed the child, you know, maybe till she's about, the child is about three years old or four, like that. But it's about as much as a woman, average woman. It's the most the average woman will feed the child with breast milk. After that, the child does need milk. You know, I remember when I was a schoolboy in the UK, they would give us a bottle of milk every day at the school because they considered milk to be so important. For it, it is so important, it's just most women don't feed their baby long enough because we live in a modern world where most women, they don't want to spend so long feeding their child. I know I would, but I would feed my child milk until as long as they need, but I know most women don't, so I understand why you say what you say because it's very important for a child to have milk. But it's because most mothers don't dedicate that time anymore, which yeah. I also understand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate your honest... What are they all doing? The women are all working. They've yeah. all got jobs. They don't have to go to work. And no time to feed their baby. Yeah. I appreciate you answering my question. Though. I know it's a long one. It's quite a discussion, but I, I do appreciate you taking my time to answer my question. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
One more thing to say. Сегодня мы хотим провести цветом на Дэн Бич. Приглашаем всех нам присоединиться. Это будет сразу после посада. Мы направимся все вместе туда, там будет война. Right after Prasadam, we want to do Kirtan on the Zen beach, right after Prasadam. Mariva. By Kirtan, we're making this island a holy place. Question. Скажу по-русски, в Таиланде и вообще вот на Пангане, на Самуи, на Пукете растет много туласи. И я слышал от Шнури Радюма с вами, что эти места являются священными. Можете что-то рассказать об этом? Um, everywhere in Thailand there is a lot of tulasi growing, and I heard from Indrajumna Swami that those places are holy. And can you say something about that? Tulsi? Yes. Yes, actually, Tosi is a, a very special sacred plant. It's actually a, a devotee. A devotee takes the form of the Tosi plant to, to serve Krishna, to serve the lotus feet of Krishna. Tosi are the leaves which are offered at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And uh, we always worship the Tosi tree plant every day in the temple. It's a very important part of the worship. When we offer to Krishna, we have to have Tosi leaves on the offerings. They say Krishna doesn't accept the offerings without Tosi. So <laughs> we try to... So now we're, we're actually seeing Tosi grow everywhere around the world, you know. Even you go to places like Bloody bus stops and Habarask, it's so cold in the winter, but they have Tosi growing. They're able to keep the Tosi there the whole year. And so it's so wonderful. And you go to Canada and place where it's really cold, but they have Tosis, they have big greenhouses with Tosi, and they keep the Tosi and it grows very nicely. So Prabhupada said, one may not have money to build a temple. But if you even just have a piece of a little piece of land, you can grow tosi there and make it a holy place just by growing tosi trees. It's very important. Okay. And we all we like to wear the tosi beads around the neck also. Because those of you who are devotees, it's nice to wear tosi around the neck. They say, Yamaraj will not come wherever the devotees have got Tosi beads around their neck. Yamaraj told the servants, don't go to those people who have got the Tosi beads and who are chanting the holy name or decorated with the tea Stay away from those people. So protects us from Yamaraj. That's the power of Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.